For our third provisional tax lecture examples, we have to look to our scenarios. Remember, there are these different scenarios. The third provisional tax payment is a lot simpler than the first and the second provisional. The third provisional tax payment, you basically have to do a proper tax calculation and calculate the tax. Now, so you would do it in the same way that you would do your annual tax calculation. This is not the same as your annual tax return. The third provisional tax payment you just do if you've not paid enough during your first and your second provisional tax and you wish to avoid penalties, like we'll see in a bit. So let's quickly look at the examples. So scenario A says, assume that Mr. A made the following provisional tax payments during the year. And what is the latest date? And this is what we've seen in the, in the first and second provisional tax payments. What is the latest date um, by which the third provisional tax payment may be made? Well, the third provisional tax payment is always made six months after year end. Unless your year end ends in February, then it may be seven. Right, so this taxpayer did the tax for 1 March 2006 to 28 February the last day of February 20x7. So the third provisional tax payment is six months after year end, but if you're year end is February like we have here, it's seven months. So it is 30 September 20x7. What is the calculate the third provisional tax? So if we go to the scenario, his taxable income for 20x7 was 500,000. So 500,000. Calculate the tax for the tables, less your rebates. Remember guys, all of these are my own tax tables. You need to use the correct ones in the exam. You just in your psycho student handbook if you have the latest one, or if not, it will be provided in the exam. Less the employee's tax, less the first provisional, less the second provisional. This gives us a negative amount. Now this negative amount is not a refund because this is provisional tax. You only get refunded on your assessment, your final tax, your actual final tax for the year. So in this case, there won't be a third provisional tax payment. Now, what I want you to understand is this taxpayer's total tax for the year is 114232 but the taxpayer has already paid more than that. So that means this taxpayer does not need to pay a third provisional tax payment. There will be no penalties, no issue, because this taxpayer has already paid enough taxes over there. Let's look at example two now. In example two, it's Mr. D. I uh, had the following provisional tax payments, first and second provisional tax, and I ask you the same questions. Right, the difference here is that his taxable income was 1.1 million rands. So, 1.1 million rands, calculate the taxes, deduct all of the prepaid taxes, that gives him 90,200 rands. Now, because there's an amount that this person can, has to pay in, it is recommended that he does the third provisional tax payment. If he does not, SARS will then assess him at some stage for the interest since the end of the tax year. Right, they'll charge him interest on that amount. That's not too much to worry about for you for your syllabus, but just understand that this person should probably pay in the third provisional tax. Right, of 90,200 to avoid unnecessary interest. Scenario C is then a company with a taxable income of 950,000 rands and which had the following provisional tax payments. So 950,000, calculate the tax at 28% or if it's a small business corporation, use the tax tables, deduct the amounts and again because there's a positive amount there, so this taxpayer should probably pay in a third provisional tax. Example 4, scenario D, same type of question, the difference is here the taxable income is 1.1 million rands. So 1.1 million rands times 28%, less the taxes that were already paid. Gives the third provisional again. It's a positive amount. So we recommend a paying. And why in this situation would there be a positive amount? It's because the first and the second provisional tax payments was not calculated on that full taxable income. It was calculated on a lower, uh, lower estimate, uh, the minimum amount properly. So that is why you have to pay in. So if you're in your first and your second provisional tax payment, you already pay enough, then you don't have to pay in. So you can fix it with your second provisional tax payment by doing a proper calculation or estimating a bit higher if you wanted to. But usually, and for exam purposes, we just look at the minimum amounts like we saw. 
Right, so guys, third provisional tax payment, as you can see, very simple. Very, very, very simple.